Hey there, my name is Tom and I'm going to be doing a demonstration for you on how quick and easy it is to get up and started with phone gap development using the new Apache Cordova tools for Visual Studio. Before we begin, you're going to need to have Visual Studio 2015 installed or if you already have 2013 with update 4, you can download the extension with Apache Cordova tools. For the rest of this demo, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2015. The first thing we're going to do is start a new project. And this is the template you get with the Apache Cordova tools or 2015. I'm going to call it um, Camera Demo App. And they open up this little readme page for us. We're going to X out of there. We don't need that. If we look at the Solution Explorer on the right, we see that they give us a folder for our style sheets. We've got one in there already, index.css. It's got nothing in it, no rules. Folder for our images, we don't have any images. A merges folder that has device-specific JavaScript override. Uh, we get a resources folder. It has icons and whatnot for each device. And we get a scripts folder. There's also an XML file for configuration. And then we get our main index.html, which is the main page for our application. As you can see, there's not much in here. It's Pretty much a, a basic HTML page. Uh, we got the title, add some spaces so it looks a little nicer. Uh, there's a reference to our style sheet that we saw over here. Uh, this paragraph tag, which doesn't say hello world. Let's got to change that. Hello world, classic. Get that. And we're going to make it like an H2 because look a little bit nicer. Uh, there's a reference to the Cordova JS, which they explain in this comment, it's added when the app is built. We don't really have to worry about that. And then platform overrides, it's over here. And our main index.js, which contains the on device ready, which fires when Cordova is loaded. See the binding right here, the on pause and on resume for the application, which are both wired up and the on device ready. I'm going to go back to the index HTML really quick because I know that I want to add a certain meta tag for the viewport to prevent any uh, pinching and uh, zooming for the app. The documentation says this shouldn't be necessary, but I've learned that it is necessary, so I'm going to add that in. And since we're going to make a demo camera app, I'm also going to make a, a button to press so we can take a picture. Uh, give it an ID of take photo uh, type button. Value, take a photo, and that should be good enough. I'm also going to put in a container to hold the photo we take. I'll call it uh, last photo. And I think that's about all we need for that one. In fact, let's make it a paragraph tag so we can default padding. Yeah, that'll be nice. So that's where we'll put the photo we take after pressing this button. And let's jump to CSS. I know that this is going to be uh, black and white text, black text on a white background by default, and that's going to look kind of ugly, so let's change that. Uh, I want the text to be white. And I saw a pretty cool blue on the documentation page for Apache Cordova. So we're going to jump there. Where was it? This one. Kind of like that. 
So we're going to steal that. Paste it in there. All right, so that'll make the text kind of nice looking. Before we go any further, we're going to want to open this up in the emulator to make sure we haven't screwed anything up already. We're going to choose Windows Phone. We're going to keep it at the 512. And the Windows Phone emulator usually takes about a minute to open up. But you only have to open it one time. So if you shrink it and you re-debug your app, push the debug button or the run without debugging, it will open up the app in the same instance of the emulator. So that should save you some time. And there it is. And obviously we haven't wired up the click event for that button yet, but we can see it. So I'm going to shrink that. We'll use it later. Now let's go ahead and wire up that click event. I'm going to grab this ID. I'm going to wire it up inside the on device ready. On click. For right now, I'm just going to spit something on the screen to make sure things are still working. Save it. Let's relaunch it. This should refresh. There we go. It works out. Now we're going to want to wire up the click event to actually take a picture. So we're going to have to dive into the configuration file over here. And you see there's a bunch of properties that we can set for our app. The name, start page, ID, versioning information, author description. Then there's a bunch of device specific properties, similar. But what we're interested in now is the plugins and we're going to need the camera plugin. Gonna add that. And I wish they had the documentation right here. That would be kind of convenient, but they do not. They force us to go to the documentation page, which we can find here. Plugins, plugins.cordova.io. And conveniently, the camera is one of the most downloaded, so it's on this list. Click right here. And here it is. See all the information about it. It says it is not available until after the device ready event. So it makes sense that we wired up the on click in there. We're going to grab this function header for get picture. That's mainly what we're concerned about. Shrink this. And you can see that they added a plugins directory with our camera plugin. Oh, and that's a lot of stuff. We don't really have to worry about it. I'm just going to hide that. We're going to change this on click to take a picture with our camera on our device. You can see they have a success callback, an error callback, and camera options. For right now, I'm not really worried about the error callback or the options. I'm going to keep the default options. So we're going to set those to null, I guess. And then we'll put in an anonymous function here. Oh, I keep doing that. And I know from looking at the documentation page that by default, the first parameter here is going to be an image URI, which we'll be using to set the source attribute of the image element that we're going to plop into that last photo taken paragraph tag, which I'll get a reference to right now. Our last photo container. And let's pat the user on the back. And 
and then update that container. Last little container. I think it's inner HTML. We're just going to put an image tag in there. Image and source. And then uh, style. We only want it to take up, let's say, 75% of the width of our screen. Close it off there. And then kind of concatenate our image URI. And that should do it. Whoops. We should have used this, not last photo. There we go. Pretty sure that's going to work. Now I want to deploy on my actual Windows phone that I've got. But before you can do that, you're going to have to register your Windows phone. And there is this little guide that Microsoft put out on how to do that. There's a lot in there, but there's really not much to it. I'll put a link to this under the video, but all you really have to do is search Windows Phone. Nope, there it is. Developer Registration 8.1. Click on that. And it kind of walks you through it from there. First, the device has to be unlocked, blah, blah, blah. And you click some buttons. But right now, since I'm already registered, I have an unregister button. Your button will say register. And then that's pretty much it. Make sure you have your Windows Phone plugged in, like I've got here. We're going to switch this to target my device. One thing to keep in mind is that the screen has to be unlocked in order for the deploy to be successful. Otherwise, it'll fail. So launch it. This usually takes about 10 seconds. And there it is. You can see our take a photo button and our nice blue background that we picked out. I'm going to go ahead and push that button. It launches our camera app. I'm going to take a photo of the monitor. It asks me if we want to accept. I will. Looking good. All right, thanks. And then you see we put the photo into our app like we wanted. That's about it. I understand this is a really simple demo using the camera plugin for PhoneGap, but imagine what you can do if you pulled in your favorite JavaScript framework like Knockout or Angular and paired that with something for layout like Bootstrap or Foundation. You can get off the ground really quickly with a professional-looking app. Anyways, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching.